Uh, assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters this uh, episode will be for uh, answering the questions i have received uh, from the community and i will make it in english so everybody will benefit out of the questions and the answers inshallah ta'ala so be with me inshallah after the ad we will continue inshallah jazakumullah khair The first question I received, can I know if I have a good luck or a bad luck by opening the Mus'haf and uh, randomly I will put my <coughs> hand uh, on a verse or on a, a word in the, in the verse and based on that uh, uh, word I will take it for uh, <coughs> positive or negative. Uh, the question came from one of the community members. The answer, absolutely, this is not correct. Because this is part of believing that somebody can decide or something can decide on behalf of the ghaib that this is right or wrong or this is good or not good. Uh, and this is against our faith. Uh, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe that nobody can uh, know the future except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, this kind of uh, being optimistic or uh, not optimistic based on a certain things happening uh, randomly this is not <coughs> related to our faith uh, at all so answer is no we should not do that and it's not accurate not fact it's all fake Question number two, I have received uh, Assalamu alaikum dear Imam, can I buy gold online? Uh, the answer is yes, but you have to make sure you know the price and you know the amount and you know the shipment that it will be immediately after you purchase the gold and if you trust the seller, no uh, big deal inshallah ta'ala while the price is being finalized between you and him and you did your transaction and he will do the shipping for you uh, in the same uh, day of purchasing. Is it okay to recite Surah Al-Fatiha when we have the agreements about a certain things like selling or buying like uh, engagement like uh, opening a new project is this okay or it's bid'ah the answer uh, it's not a bid'ah reciting al-fatiha with the intention of having the barakah of this agreement or a new relation or engagements or a marriage ceremony or opening a new business it's kind of having the barakah and the blessing by reciting the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's better than to start uh, having uh, uh, something else not related to uh, our, our deen. So it's not a bid'ah uh, and the intention is having the barakah inshallah ta'ala by reciting uh, the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another question came to me, Imam Abu Umar, Assalamu Alaikum. What is the hukum shari if I have a, a tool, I use it to straight my hair, and this tool has something related to the skin of the bag? Uh, I think this is not haram, while this is not something to eat or to drink, and after manufactured, this kind of uh, product is not any more uh, related to the bag anymore so uh, no big deal to use it inshallah ta'ala but absolutely to make it uh, clearly with, with yourself if you have something else has nothing to do with any uh, product of the the khinzir will be better absolutely inshallah ta'ala Another question came to me about uh, 
the ayah in Surah Yusuf, وَهَمَّ بِهَا uh, uh, The questioner said, uh, what is the meaning of وَهَمَّ بِهَا He said, we know that the prophets are uh, ma'asum and how he has this kind of intention to do the haram thing. Uh, absolutely, this is not the meaning of this, uh, this kalima. Uh, uh, and if you <coughs> listen to Imam Abdul Basit when he when he recites this ayah, he will stop on hear him. hammat bih, he will stop, and he will continue. Wahamma biha laula. Hear him is different than his ham. Both in the same location, and both inside the room, and the room is locked. But her ham is to do the haram. His ham is to prevent her from being close to him using his hands or slap her face or try to beat her or try to do something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows him a sign that don't do it because you will be in trouble. They will kill you. And he uh, immediately redirected him to run toward the doors and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlocked the doors and he left the room. And you know, uh, at the end of that uh, uh, hallway, they found the husband behind the last door. Another question uh, about uh, the ayah in Surah Yusuf. The one who spoke on behalf of the, uh, the wife of the, uh, uh, the Aziz, the, the <coughs> vice president or the governor of Egypt, is it true that he was a child? Uh, we don't have any evidence uh, to confirm that he was a child. Uh, all what we know that the person that he spoke, he was from her side, from her family. And he said the truth, and he w he was a witness to the benefit or for the benefit of Yusuf alayhi salam. But he was a child, not a child. We have no evidence uh, telling us uh, who was that person. If he is a child or an adult, a male or a female, God knows. And we should not, by the way, search for those details that we will not benefit out of knowing those details. All what you have to know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported somebody, He will let everything work for His benefit. Allah controls everything, everything in His hand. All what you have to do is to trust Him and to have the tawakkul upon Him. Another question came to me, if I'm bleeding, uh, can I pray uh, if I'm bleeding and if this blood uh, touched my uh, clothes? Absolutely, you can't pray with the blood uh, over your clothes because, you know, uh, <coughs> these are days we have the time and we have the facility to clean it and to change our clothes because uh, the blood is nudges and we can't pray with the uh, clothes that they have najasa on it. Uh, absolutely this question in general but in certain cases when you have for example a mission you are in a military you have no time or no chance to wash it or to clean it in that time it's a necessity and that it's special uh, rules for that situation but in general yes the, the, the blood it has to be cleaned before you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, can I force my wife to wear hijab? Uh, uh, this question came to me from one of our sisters. Uh, no, you can't force her because when you force anybody to do a certain thing related to the faith, you will uh, uh, force him or you will let him do it without sincerity. And anything without sincerity, it's not acceptable and it will not be counted for her as a, a worshiping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and I can assume that when you marry her, she was without hijab and you agreed about that. So you have to respect 
that she wasn't muhajaba and you can't force her to uh, wear the hijab but uh, you have to show her that it's kind of uh, da'wah for her you have to convince her you have to make dua for her you can uh, explain to her and uh, have sabr on her inshallah ta'ala and she will absolutely one day uh, wear it if you will be a good example for her in uh, uh, this subject regarding the the religion uh, can I divorce her if she refused uh, I can't say it's by law it's a eligible reason to go and divorce her because she's not muhajjaba unless if she was muhajjaba before marriage and she changed after that and you put that as a condition to continue your relation with her in that time yes you have the right to say wallahi uh, i want my wife to be muhajjaba and this is what we uh, start with from day one and now you want to change i'm sorry i can't stay with you in that situation yes you can but other other uh, scenario no you can't uh, make it uh, a reason uh, but but as i said you have to show her that it's the right decision inshallah and you have to have sabr make dua for her inshallah ta'ala especially if you have uh, kids and you establish a family it's not a joke uh, to say i want a divorce or uh, etc another question uh, came to me uh, I am an old lady and my husband passed away. Should I do the idda while I don't have any uh, chance of being pregnant or something like that? Uh, absolutely, you have to do the idda because the idda is a haq for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, even if you don't have relation with him or you don't even have the uh, capability to be pregnant anymore, or even if you hate him, no kind of loyalty or respect for his uh, uh, life, uh, you have to have the, the idda, what we call it the duration, the four months uh, and ten days, because this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have to uh, uh, do it for the sake of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No kind of loyalty or respect for his uh, uh, life, uh, you have to have the, the idda, what we call it the duration, the four months uh, and ten days because this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to uh, uh, do it for the sake of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another question, the last question in this session, uh, I have a broken uh, leg and it's uh, with a cast, I can't uh, uh, wash it, I can't use the water, how can I make wudu and how can I make ghusl? Absolutely, you don't have to wash that part of your body in your ghusl or in your wudu. All what you have to do is just to uh, make masih on it with a wet hand and that's it and when you have a ghusl you just put a plastic bag on it so the, the water will not touch it and will not affect that part of your body inshallah until you will be recovered and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants the easy for us not the difficult may Allah bless all of you those are all the questions that I received may Allah make it clear for our heart and for our community, may Allah bless all of you. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.